What is going on everyone? This video is about how to convert a CSV file to a JSON file using the pandas library in Python. We're also going to be talking about how to convert a pandas data frame with compression and I'm going to walk through how to do this with gzip specifically. And then finally, we're going to read back the uncompressed and compressed data that we've written back into Python. All right, so to get started in our Jupyter notebooks here, we're going to be importing the pandas library. So it's just import pandas as PD. So it just gives it a short form. I'm going to run that line of code. Now we're going to create a variable to pass in our CSV file that we want to read in and convert. But before I do that, I just want to quickly show you the data we're working with. As you can see here, it is a CSV that is delineated by a comma. And the first row is the columns. And then each row after that is every single record of data. It's important to know how your CSV file is delineated because it might change the way you read it into a pandas data frame. So I'm going to define a variable for our CSV file and I'm going to call it CSV underscore file. And the next thing is we're going to pass the full path location and file name into this variable. So because my path had slashes in it, I have defined it as a raw string so I don't get any errors. Great, so the next step is we're gonna pass the CSV file into our read underscore CSV method in pandas. So we're gonna be doing pd.read underscore CSV. And now we're gonna pass the CSV underscore file and we're gonna give that a run. Now, as you can see, my data has successfully read into my pandas data frame here. And one thing I mentioned is you have to know how your data is separated for every record. So if your data is, let's say, a tab delineated CSV file, you're going to want to pass the SEP, which stands for separator, and we're going to pass in a string called slash T. Now, if I run that, my data is going to come in all incorrect because it is actually comma delineated. I just wanted to show you how to read this in if it was a tab delineated. Great. So I'm just going to put that back to comma. This is the default without defining this variable. And now we're just going to pass this to a new variable called animal underscore df and make it equal to this. Great. So now that we have our pandas data frame with all our records, now we can move on to actually converting it to a JSON file. So I'm just going to create a new variable with a full file path output of the new file that we're going to create. So it's called JSON output. And you have to make sure that your data ends with JSON. Now I'm going to label this output as a new variable. And now the method we're going to use to actually convert this pandas data frame into a JSON is the two JSON method. So we're going to do animals underscore DF dot to JSON. And there's one mandatory parameter we have to pass, and that is the file location that we want to write to. Let's run this to see how it is. I want to add additional parameters to fine grain the output of this data set. So I've just written it and we view this data in PyCharm here. What you're going to see is all the records have been written to the first row and its default is actually column format, which for a lot of people, they might be consuming or reading the data by the record. So this might not be ideal. So if you want to first fix the output format without changing it from column to records, what we're going to do here is add another parameter and it's going to be called indent and we're going to make this equal to one. And I'm going to run that again and let's reopen our file. And now each value is on a new row, but this is still organized by column. And if you set, if you pass this to another team, they might not be expecting this and they might be unhappy. So I find a lot of cases people are expecting JSON outputs in a records orientation. So in order to change that, we're just going to have to add another parameter here. Now the parameter we're going to add is called orient and we're going to make that equal to records. Now, if you're reading this output back into a pandas data frame, it can handle both of them. It's not an issue, but if someone is reading this directly through Python, it might change the way that they're reading this data set. So let's just give that a run and see what our output looks like. Now you can see for each object, I have every single column and its value for a given record. All right, so we've successfully written our data and we've walked through how to write it with either a column or a record orientation in JSON. Now let me just show you how to write this data as a compressed gzip file instead. So I'm just gonna now pass in a new file path. And the only difference here is it's the same location as my other file, but I've added .gz 
to tell the system that this is a, G, a compressed gzip file, which is still a JSON that we're going to be reading in. I'm just going to change this to be output underscore compressed. Now I'm going to create my output variable called output underscore compressed. And we're going to make this equal to animals underscore df. So we're going to read, read in the same data frame that we created above to JSON. And we can pass back our output location. Orient is equal to records. Indent is equal to one. And the change we're going to add here is another parameter called compression. And we're going to make that equal to gzip. Now we're going to give that a run. All right, so I didn't get any error. I think this has written successfully. Great, now we're going to read this new JSON file that we've just created back into a pandas data frame. So to do that, all we can do here is add pd.read. And now instead of CSV, it's going to be JSON. And now we can pass that output location and get the result. Awesome. Now, if we wanted to read the compressed file, all we have to do is pass that other location and file to the same method. And that works as well. No change has to be done in pandas to actually read a compressed file versus an uncompressed, which is great. Great. So pandas made it super easy to read uncompressed data. Now you're telling me, Adriano, I want to read this compressed data without using pandas. How do I do this? I'm glad you asked. Let's walk through how to read this compressed file. Now there's a couple extra steps we have to do uh, before we are actually add our code. We have to go and make sure we're adding two additional libraries. So we're going to now import JSON and we're also going to import gzip. And I'm just going to make sure that has been loaded into my Jupyter notebook. And now let's get to reading our compressed data so I can use the with gzip dot open pass in the file path that we want to read. So it's going to be this file here. We're going to use R for read as JSON file. Make sure there's an indent and we're going to say data is equal to json.loads and json file.read.decode. So we're just going to make sure we're reading this in with the UTF-8 decoder. And finally, we're going to print our data. There you go. We have successfully read in that compressed file. And if you want to read one record at a time now, because we've used that record output format when we created the file, all we can do now is do for record in data print record. And there you go. We have each record being printed out. And if we need to do something at the record level, we can now do that. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful and you now know how to convert a CSV file into JSON using the pandas library in Python. Now, if you want to support me in making more videos in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on my next data integration and data engineering tutorial. See you next time.